Hey guys, uh, Dark Fate here. <clears throat> so, if, if you didn't know, I'm a pretty big Star Ocean fan, so I picked up Star Ocean Last Hope. Uh, that's the cover. Uh, there's the back, if you can see it. Um, but yeah, so I picked this up. I was really anticipating it. And I've got to play about maybe four or five hours, so I'm going to do the first impression of this. Uh, first off, um, for right now, I mean, it could go on PS3, but right now, it's Xbox exclusive. Like, it doesn't say, uh, only on Xbox, so, I mean, that could be a little, uh, thing saying that it is gonna come up for PS3 eventually. But, um, so it's a three-disc game. Here are the two discs. I don't, the, the third one is actually in my Xbox right now. So, uh, three discs. Uh, all fit in this one little thing. So, Star Ocean... I don't want I have the bad habit of calling it Star Ocean 4, because technically it is, but it's a prequel, so it's Star Ocean The Last Hope, excuse me. So basically, this takes, this is the prequel to the whole series, it takes place before Star Ocean First Departure, and, um, this is a great time if you want to get into Star Ocean, that you get into it, because, I mean, this sets up everything that's happened in the universe, and then you'll be able to play all the other games, and basically, uh, this, you'll be able to relate to this game, because it's setting up for the first game, and so on. So in this game, you take control of a SRF, which, um, I, right, for right now, I can't really remember what SRF means, what uh, stands for. It's basically, like, the Earth, oh, here it is, it's, a uh, Space Reconnaissance Force. It's the, it's Earth's, like, uh, log into it. So you take the control of the main character, Edge Maverick, yes, a very unfortunate name, and... He and Raimi Sionji are members of something of something called the SRF. The SRF, as I said, is the Space Reconnaissance Force, which is basically Earth had just, just had the well, it had the Third World War, and with all these nuclear attacks and everything, it's kind of made Earth into a wasteland. So after that, they sent out um. The humans, uh, the Earthlings, sent out into space to try to find new hab uh, habitable uh, worlds that they can live on to escape Earth. So they have these space colonies, and they form something called the SRF. And basically, the SRF, this is taking place right when their first mission is happening to find the first planet that they can maybe have life, uh, find life on. And Edge Maverick and Raimi uh, have been assigned to the ship, the Calmus. And they are going on the first mission, along with, I think, four or three other ships. The Aqueous, the, uh... I can't remember the other two. They're not really, they're not really important. Only the Aqueouses. And, uh, one other one. But, uh, so you are going on the first ever mission for the SRF. And... So you are on the Calness, and your first mission is to go to a planet called Aos. So, Aos is... It's kind of a prehistoric planet, so you you go there. Well, basically, you you're flying there, and you're under warp speed or whatever. You know what I mean, like light light speed and all that. That's basically what warp speed is. Um, and something goes wrong, and you crash land onto this planet Aos, which just happens to be the planet that you're supposed to be on, which is kind of good fortune, I guess. So you crash land there. So as uh, the dudes of the SRF. Edge and Raimi go out and see if this planet is able to be, uh, lived on. And it is. I mean, they can breathe. It's, it's a lot like Earth. I mean, there, it's very, uh, there's a lot of foliage and all that. But, um, it is kind of prehistoric. Um, and they are attacked by these big insects, and that's kind of like the opening to the world. And then, um, you meet a character named Faze. Faze is from... Oh, I can't remember what their race is called. Uh, he's from this alien race that actually the the Earth without um, the SRF, well, without like the regular SRF uh, officers knowing, has been in contact with these aliens for quite some time. He's a Eldarian, and so they've been in contact with these Eldarians for quite some time, and they are very uh, advanced culture, and they fix the ship that crash landed, so then you're able to leave. And I'm on another planet. I just got there, so I don't really remember the name. But um, that's kind of a brief brief summary of what's happened so far in um, the game that I've uh, from what I've played. 
So, uh, the characters, Edge, he's kind of like, he's kind of a cool and, and calm kind of guy, but he does have a temper, and it does kind of get the best of him at some times, but he's, but he gets promoted to a captain status, and he kind of has to grow up a little bit. Um, Raimi Sionji, or Sionji, she is, Ra uh, she is Edge's best friend, so, th so she's kind of like the, uh, she kind of like balances him out. Uh, she's kind of more uh, calm and collected. She doesn't really have a, uh, she doesn't have like a temper or anything like that. And then Faze, he's kind of, he's he's an Aldarian, so he's kind of new to the human races, and he's kind of, he kind of looks up to Edge. She's it's, it's almost like he thinks he's uh, Edge's protege, and that's what the main characters so far have been in the story. Uh, the story, I mean, the characters are pretty good. I mean. I mean, they are, they are, I like them so far. Uh, you can tell that they're very Star Wars esque Um, so far the story, it is kind of slow, and there is, the cutscenes can be kind of long. Like, I remember, um, it was 30 minutes, I, can, I, I looked, they have an uh, in-game clock that you could do from the pause menu, and it was 30 minutes before I actually even landed on the planet and actually got to do stuff. Besides the battle simulator in the beginning, just to show you the controls, which takes about three minutes. Um, but it's about 30 minutes before you even get to really do anything, and you, um, you can't... The cutscenes are long, obviously. It's 30 minutes. So, um, and I don't know. I mean, you you can pause it. You could, Well, you could press the start button, and I'll give you the choice to skip the cutscene, but it doesn't let you pause the actual cutscene, which I find retarded. I mean, so you could... That, I, I don't know. That doesn't even make sense to me. But, um, I found that kind of retarded because I actually had to oh, wait to eat dinner because I had to watch the rest of this cutscene. But I learned later that, um, even though I wouldn't want to do this, that you can skip the cutscenes and they'll give you a brief summary of what happens in the scene if you have to go. Which is, which is good, but I think it's still kind of stupid they just don't let you, uh, pause the cutscene. Or at least give you, like, a cutscene, um, watcher, like a video gallery to watch all the cutscenes and things like that. They did that in Star Ocean, uh, Second Evolution. Um, but yeah, the cutscenes are pretty good. There is one major problem, though, I do not like. They only give you the English track to, um, listen to for voice acting, and they didn't even take the time to sync the voices with the lips. So half the time, they'll be talking, and, they'll, and their mouth will be like this. And they'll be talking. Like, they'll be like, blah, 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 but their mouth's gonna be... I mean, I just... <laughs> I mean, if you're only going to let you use the English track, why wouldn't you sync up things? Um, but anyway, so let's move on to the graphical things of this uh, game. 